Welcome to the Path Monk Presents Podcast. My name is Sean Donnelly Lewis, and today we're talking with Fergus Dyer Smith. He's the founder and CEO at Wushi, videoagency.com. Fergus, how's it going? Great. Good to be here. Thanks. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. Um, talk, talk, to <laughs> us about, talk to us about Wushi. What do you guys do? Yeah, so we are, um, although it has agency in our uh, title, that's not, not really what we, what we are, but we, we are a, we're a video operations company. So um, essentially what we do is we help large corporates, typically enterprise type scale businesses, um, manage and scale out video ops. So that can be everything from uh, production, creative, through to distribution, management, measurement, Everything that revol- uh, sort of re- surrounds the the video operation, which in the last ten years, especially, has got increasingly problematic and logistic heavy. So that's what we do as a company, um, and it has both a sort of service layer to it, if you like, which is the agency part, and it has a software layer, which is um, the sort of delivery part, essentially. Okay. And so who would be potential clients? Is it, is it Fortune 500 companies? Is it, is it your mom and pop shop? Um, where are you guys? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's large companies. So, you know, our customers are everyone from, you know, Amazon, a big customer of ours. Um, we've got a lot of the sort of biggest companies that you've never, never heard of type businesses. So a lot of biotech companies, um, finance companies. Uh, so they're typically, they're typically large global corporates um with multiple offices and all that sort of thing and it it's really because the way we're structured as a business is is we're a global operation so we're able to um facilitate and help businesses pretty much anywhere in the world and so that's naturally sort of fits into these larger larger corporate and enterprise type type customers um but you know some of them are companies that you heard of and like i said some of them are just companies you've never heard of and probably never will hear of <laughs> <laughs> that's all right so how have you been able to to grow the company has it been mainly um seo has it been any digital marketing has it been referrals how have you guys, guys been able to grow yeah I, well actually the business has been through sort of different phases so at different times we've gone through different approaches so when when, when the company was started it was really it was a side hustle, really. It was a sort of, you know, a, an idea that we had, which was, you know, it was early days of YouTube and, and we could see there was these amazing creators and people producing stuff all around the world. Uh, the cost of hardware had come down low enough and software that actually you could get pretty much production quality stuff being produced in people's bedrooms. And so the, the, the initial model was was more of a classic two-sided marketplace. So we had uh you know video makers on the one side and we had small businesses actually on on the other side and we were the 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 platform or the marketplace the layer that sat in between facilitating um those inter interactions and we would take a cut and that was in purely um digital marketing seo sem like the lot you know affiliate Mm -hmm. which we tried every way to grow that that business we did reasonably well i mean at one point we were sort of you know pushing 300, 400 odd projects a month through that platform, but the metrics were all upside down. So lifetime value really low, cost of acquisition really high. <laughs> so uh, we were burning through money pretty quickly. And at that point in time, we were just self-funded, uh, sort of bootstrap thing. Um, but at, so at some point we, we had to make a decision on, you know, how were we gonna pivot the business? Um, and the, the pivot was really around the customer. So we, we sort of pivoted to, a a different customer went right to the other end of the scale um, and that shifted the business consequently to a much more sales led approach. So uh, it was less of a marketing led approach, become a much, much more sales led approach. Um, and now we're somewhere back in the middle. So it's still very sales led, but actually it's pretty heavily supported. through Type activity, content, obviously, and um, a bit of account based marketing as well. Okay. And what, what role does the website play in, in, in acquiring new clients? Yeah, well, the website is really, it's, it's where ultimately everything gets directed. Um, interesting you pick on the website because that's actually about to, to be completely revamped. So I like everyone, you know, <laughs> we're sort of like, I look at my website and sort of oh, put my hand, hand in my head in my hands. Uh, but it's, 
it's you know it's the it's the catch-all so uh, ultimately it doesn't matter what route people go through they're going to end up at the website at some point so even through sales you know that in fact this is an interesting story the whole reason we have wishy video agency in in one in one of our urls is because of when of people hitting that website and not fully understanding what we did okay. so so uh, that's an example of you know a sales guy sends out an email says you know hi just follow up from from our call they click on the url which at the time was just wish.com they get to our website which talked about this two-sided marketplace which didn't actually accurately describe what we could do for them and just created tons of confusion um, and so the, the actually the url shift was was part of that it was just a simple um shift that we made to to make it easier for a customer to un actually understand what we did even though we're not really an agency they understand what an agency does so um <laughs> that sort of made it easy but the website is really it's the route through which almost all our customers will come to us at some point um even if we've targeted them through you know a video ad for example right so with the website obviously you're saying there's room for improvement what are what are some things that you hope to improve or uh yeah in the process of at the moment uh well it's um th there's a, a number of complexities around some of it's just technical stuff which is uh you know getting getting updates out without having to call on technical staff which is you know basic really i mean this day and age that's that's just a should be easy but it's not um and uh, there's some design issues so it, it doesn't really represent our sort of design ethos uh it's 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 sort of a bit clunky and just i don't know it just doesn't really represent what we're about and because video is obviously a very visual thing um you know your website really has to, well in our we feel has to really uh, stand out on that front um, and the new one does. Um, I don't know when this is going out, but actually maybe by the time this goes out, a new one will be up, which would be fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously video, you know, including video in it, we don't really think we use it well enough um, in there. So I think that's, 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 that's the core of it really. Yeah. And kind of coming back around to, to what you guys do, what do you guys offer that let's say, your competition doesn't what would be you know what 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 separate you separates what you guys do from the rest of the pack um well a couple of things so th the first big thing is that um we're a bit like um let's how do i put this we, we we're similar in some ways to you know the way airbnb or uber think about things we're sort of like the largest video company that doesn't actually make any videos so we don't actually <laughs> make anything ourselves in the building that's not 100 percent true but it's more it's it's sort of 90 percent true in that you know we had this marketplace that we built up in this network and now rather than that network being like an open network that any anybody can come in and post a project to it's actually something that we use internally um, to deliver and execute for our customers so what that provides us with or provides our customers with is a huge amount of scale which is very difficult um, with, with video. Uh, geographical spread, so there's pretty much, there's, there's almost nowhere in the world that we can't get footage if we need to. Um, we've got you know, 16,000 plus creative teams sitting in our network. Um, and choice, so you, you've got all this uh, expertise and skill set um, in that uh, network, which means that if someone needs a specialist paper animator or something you know we've likely got at least one person in the system if not multiple so those sort of three things are unique to not unique to us but pretty unique to us in that if we're up against a traditional production company then they they typically won't have that um, and then on top of that we layer a lot of account management so really what when we look at enterprise what we found over the years was what they really care about is quality of delivery consistency of that quality but also removing work from them. So, you know, giving them a tool or, or, or similar, which we have tried, just isn't helping them, it isn't taking work away from them, it's actually giving them work to do. And so, you know, we, we suck a lot of that work away. Uh, and, the, and the other one sort of centralize a lot of that um, processing for them. So video is very logistics heavy. The people and, you know, voiceover and animators and all these different component parts flying around um, and often a company will have you know maybe even a hundred video providers that they may have used over over a course of a period we actually centralize that all give them essentially we call it internally one throat to choke uh, one, one uh, throat to choke uh, so but 
but without compromising on their ability to actually have all these suppliers so it's you know we're the central point central billing central legal central everything uh, but they still got this massive access so that's it's it's sort of a, a unique setup in some ways and, and just to switch gears here for a second how are you guys how is sales and marketing structured do you guys have sales and marketing right in today's day and age everything is so if i could say diverse and, and people are doing so many different different ways do you guys have a traditional sales and marketing or what does that look oh, like oh yeah we we we're, we're definitely heavy on sales so we have an entire you know we have um we have we have four sort of core roles if you like in the sales team so we have a, a um, sdr team or we call them bdes but sdr sort of lead gen uh, team we have new business team which is essentially working with the sdrs to convert uh, leads to to uh, new customers then we have bdms which is uh, sorry csds which is sort of you know client services essentially so they look after accounts when we get them but also ch charge to a certain degree with growing those accounts so continue looking for how we can further service our customers and then we they have they're supported by the equivalent of an S of SDRs, but um working with existing accounts so they're all about helping sort of grow uh, grow our uh, number of you know contacts and things within any given organization so yeah i mean sales for us is that's just the sales part and then obviously we've got a marketing part that supports through either generating leads or you know producing insights or um so yes yeah, so that's probably the the biggest part of the company to be honest okay yeah and so i've i obviously i've worked with big companies i've worked with small companies right so when you have a if i could say a qualified lead how does that look actually how and how do you how do you kind of uh, navigate the tension that sometimes happens between marketing and sales, right? You have the marketing people that like big and colorful things and, and like to create content, but the mark, uh, the salespeople, they're all about, okay, is it actually making money? Right? So how does that look a little bit? Say you have a qualified lead. How do, what would even be the process, um, structurally? Uh, so, well, we have a pretty tight sort of focus and well, was, um, understanding of where a lead sits in the sales and marketing stack if you like so you know we understand uh where leads sit once they come in we, th we sort of think of it like a, a wedge so we have this diagram which is um you know you've got the thin end of the wedge which is really where the sdrs are working and they're all about just getting us into a company we know once we get in that actually it, it becomes much easier for us to uh show companies how we can help them and the efficiencies that come to be and, and all that sort of thing but actually that that's, that's quite a hard job um but then you sort of as you move up the wedge you then start to get into um okay we've got the first deal over the line where's the second and third deal coming from which is sort of somewhere in the middle of that wedge and then up to the back end you then get into the point where it's okay how do we talk about an annualized um deal where we're essentially saying well let's look at this year because once we're working at that level, actually we can bring way more efficiencies to bear um, through our purchasing power, et cetera. So it's, uh, it's understanding where a customer fits on that journey with us. Um, in terms of the tension between marketing and sales, um, we don't have too much of it because I think sales, marketing mostly focused on lead gen, um, although, well, it's not 100% true. They're sort of focused on lead gen or or on helping to close deals, so that you know they'll bring insight into sales meetings, for example, as a as a way to sort of show, look, have you thought about this? And often it's because some of the industries we're working will be a bit weird, where um, perhaps video is new to them, um, which is you know saying that in 2021 is still true. There are still companies that don't really look at it, and so. Yeah. You, you know you need to show them look this is what's going on or this is how it might help um so yeah so that at, at the moment there's not uh a huge amount of tension there i don't think that's, that's, <laughs> that that's good be. news <laughs> yeah. yeah just um just to change even topics here for a second um yeah what kind of how, how do you educate yourself how do you continue to grow as, as a leader of, uh, of a company um uh, what kind of content do you consume I see a lot of books, books behind you, books. Yeah, right? Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm, I, I, I sort of um, eat books uh, at, a, at a pace. Um, so that's, I think that's, that's probably one of my core ways. I think 
books give you a you know i'll read I, you know i do there's a few podcasts i listen to actually less and less i've found um but i find that if 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 a, if, a, if there's a if there's a book then it can actually if, if someone's taking the time to write a book then there's probably something there that can be learned even if it's just one thing mm. so you'll see some of these books have got you know like this is a recent one uh you know no rules which is read hastings there's a bundle of little tabs in there so i'll i'll read it mark it up and then go back to it at some point and just put that into evernote or something so you know that's one of my processes podcasts there's certain podcasts that i listen to very few now um but like three or four um the odd video and then peers so actually interestingly more recently i've started leaning on um let's say more experienced CEOs and founders who are perhaps further, you know, maybe they're 10 years ahead of me mm -hmm. um, and sort of lean on them to a certain degree. Very cool. Well, since we're, we're slowly coming to the end of the show, but before we end, it's, it's about to get a little bit hotter. We're entering right. the rapid fire section. I don't know if your seat got a little bit warm on you or if right, you kind okay. of felt the temperature rising, but I'm just going to throw some question at, at you and you just answer them as quickly and honestly as possible. All right. Sound good? Sounds good. Perfect. Okay, Fergus, what was the last book that you read without turning around and looking for a title? <laughs> uh, Tiny Habits, which is Tiny a ben, ben Fogg book on, uh, on sort of self-behavior, essentially. Awesome. Um, if there were no boundaries in technology, what would be the one problem you want to have solved for your company? Oh, pricing. All right. <laughs> Uh, right. Video is, 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 there's so many variables. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's possible. I don't think it, technology is a barrier, but that's just one that sort of comes to mind how much pricing can cause a, a, a headache. What was the last thing that kept you awake about your company? Um, You could, I mean, people actually say that everything is going so well. They're so excited. They're so inspired. Oh, no, I, I, it's, it's more the reverse. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a total shit show and trying to pick one of them. Uh, I think probably, well, the last thing that kept me up actually was a product demo that we had to do um, that I'm still not convinced uh, that we, we, we've got it right. Um, so, it was a, you know, it, we, we've mocked it all up, got the prototype things there and as i'm demoing it i'm not 100 percent sure that, that it's the right <laughs> thing i guess that's every product product person knows has that fear but anyway that's that that, that keeps me up but it's one amongst many many things so. <laughs> awesome well at least you're honest right some people yeah. you know not, not honest if you could start let's maybe not say whooshy let's say your professional career over again what would be the one piece of advice that you give yourself oh that's a good one um Uh, I would say, don't take your twenties too seriously. Don't take your twenties too seriously. Sorry about that. I think I lost you. All right. Yeah, for a bit. Uh, yeah. So um, the question was, um, if I could do it all again, what what would be my advice? So I think it would be, you know, don't take my, don't take your twenties too seriously. I think you can you can make a lot more mistakes in your twenties and uh, easily recover. And actually, the more that you do make, uh, the better the rest of your life will be. All right, that's Fergus's advice to everyone listening. If you're in your twenties, just make some mistakes. <laughs> Big ones, the bigger the better. <laughs> I'm sure that that's not what you mean, um, Fergus. We we normally we just let our guests have the last word on the show. By the way, check them out: wushivideoagency.com. Um, yeah, if you feel like, if you just want to sum up everything that we talked about, or you feel like there's something that we left out, I'll just give you the last word for the show today. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you've left out other than, you know, um, if anyone's thinking about video, then obviously get in touch. Uh, I'm sure we can, I'm sure we can help. Um, no, that's, uh, it, it's been great. Perfect. Thanks for your time, Fergus. No problem.